Hold on, leave me one second. Let me go get a glass right quick. Oh yeah, do you think? Hello. You said you was gonna get a glass, but you ain't got a bottle. <laughs> got a okay. glass for the bottle. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Nerds, I'm Jedi Master Grayson, and I'm your favorite cousin, favorite cousin Bill, and this is Does, Does it, it Hold? hold up? Up? The show where we revisit classic genre films to see if they're as good or as bad as we remember, and we may get drunk while we do it. But mostly, <laughs> mostly, always encouraged but never mandatory. But we can't do it alone. We are joined, as always, by a special guest to help us determine if this film stands the test of time. Uh. He, he is the Shaolin master of the Comic Book Trap House YouTube channel. Uh, guys, welcome to the show. Ready, C. Ready, C. What's oh, up? man. Thank you for having me back again, y'all. I mean, it's an honor every trip. Every Ready trip. Ready, C. Smoke stream. Yes, I do. As I am yes, at this exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> Course, man. You Sorry, y'all we... heard of fireworks going off. Uh, Lollapalooza is going on right here behind me, and it's loud. But I think it's okay. So I think That's what's good. up. Billy Eilish right. just tore it up right here. Shout out, friend of the show. Friend, friend of the show. Of the show. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, y'all. Is as this might look a little different? Bill is Chicago and on this episode. Oh, oh you in my hometown right now? He's yeah, boy, I'm out here in South <laughs> Loop. You guys. Are gonna be watching this way after this. this comes out like, that. like I, I will be somewhere else when this comes so. out. But it was dope over here in Chicago for you people watching this in the future. That's what's up. I'm a time traveler right now. Yeah, it's kind of like time travel. Um, but no, yeah. seriously, traveling is like time travel, like going in and out of time zones. It's crazy. But... I think about that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> or... it is kind of like time travel. Uh, I'm so excited to get into the movie that we're talking about today. Yeah, Alex, uh, let's go been... back in time right now. Let's, let's go, go back to the time. 80s. To the 80s, because we have been talking a lot on the show about 90s ninja movies. But let's get into an 80s kung fu movie, The Last Dragon, 1985. Oh, you um, are the last, last dragon. dragon. <laughs> you possess the power of oh, the kung No, oh, now see, no. there's not one... Yo, I, I'm not leaving tonight until I hear my man Bill really croon out that tune for me. <laughs> I've been thinking about that shit all week. <laughs> oh, oh week. Bro, bro, yeah. bro. we gotta do a remix. We gotta do a remix, man. Oh, we do, yeah, we, we do, man. To. That shit needs to be brought back, and we need to do the movie over. We just need to have yeah. that back. <laughs> do Somebody... the, do the, do the, let's do the remake. Well, not the remake. Let's do the sequel, man. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> we we yeah, have man. Vanity's funeral. You know what I'm saying? And then we have to, was it to cop to hot to to hot Tomac 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 Tomac. We get Tomac back. Ernie Reyes Jr. is over there. I don't oh. know what happened to Jimmy. Tom Mac ain't hard Jimmy? to find out here in New York. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> right, let's go. He's not hard to find. I see Tom Mac all the time. Really? Any exactly. Comic Con, any New York Comic Con, Tom Mac is there. Right. Any one of them. He kind of, like, this definitely made his career. This is the first acting gig for him. Uh, he right. just kind of learned how to act from the movie. He's more just a, a martial artist. Uh, and that was, I think, was a good decision for this movie because, you know, a lot, like, if the action isn't believable, especially from him, uh, it's it's not going to be that great. But before we get into the nitty gritty, uh, how nitty, did you guys nitty. feel, <laughs> the nitty and the gritty, uh, how did you guys feel the first time you watched this movie? Ready, see, I'll let you go first. Oh, man, it was, I'm glad you said how did we feel because that's really what it was man it was a feeling after we came mm -hmm. from seeing this film you know as especially being young and shit like that and in the 80s with the whole kung fu and mm -hmm. ninja vibe that was going on at the time i mean 
that movie came out at the perfect time, you know, for the interest because we were all running around in Bruce Lee shoes with the with the two toe foot, <laughs> and you know, and and yeah. and buying Chinese stars at the mall, and you know, wearing the geese and shit like that. So I mean, it was just a part of the lifestyle. Kung Fu was definitely a part of of uh, the culture in the in the early eighties like that. Man, everybody Absolutely. wanted to run around and be be a ninja or you know just have that discipline at the same time as in the in the whatever you're in whatever you're into kung fu was a part of it i don't care mm-hmm. if you were a skater or a dj mm-hmm. or, or, or 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 an artist of some type you know everybody yeah. incorporated that kung fu mentality into everything they did yeah, what about you, Bill? What was, uh, do you remember how you felt the first time you watched the movie? Yeah, I remember exactly where I was when I watched it for the first time. I saw it on TV for the first time on WTTO21, Birmingham. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There it is. And I remember moms being like, yo, y'all ain't never seen this. Y'all need to watch this. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to have good people in your life. You got to have good family members. You got to have good parents, people who raise you up right. So <laughs> my dudes had us on point. And let me tell you, the hip-hop, kung fu element of the culture is undeniable, man. Like, hip-hop was directly influenced all the way through the kung fu movement, man. Like, people are masters. You know, yeah. master this, master that. You know, the DJs were all wanted to be masters. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had their little underlings. And everybody came to, like, the battles like like it was a kung fu battle. You know what I'm saying? They, everybody had their different styles. You got to have your different styles, man. It's like everybody's flashy. Like, the hip-hop shit is all kung fu shit, man. Like, see, all now that's dope. Everything. That's dope because we're going to be able to see this from different perspective. If you're saying that you saw it when it came out on TV and somebody was telling you, like, yo, you, you need to get hip to this, then that's that's a whole different generation than when I saw it because I saw it when, when it came out in the movie. I saw it in the movie well, theater. Yeah, but it was but only it, like it, a few years it after. Dropped in it, 19, came it came out in 1985. Right. So and so this was have been like 91 when I saw it. I was 14 like 91, years 92. old. How old were you when you saw that? Probably like six, seven. Wow. Okay. See, that's a whole different sp- perspective to build on because I was about 14 years old when that shit came out in the movie theater and we were still feeling it. You know what I'm saying? So, right. to be, you know, uh, to, to have felt it as a six year old, you know, uh, later on down the line in the same way that we felt it. You know, as teens at the movie theater, that says a lot about the the core and the beef of that film, right there, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't really have a memory before this movie. Like I just I remember just being so like this and uh like Ninja Turtles and other like ninja stuff being kind of just in my brain for whatever reason. I don't think we ever owned The Last Dragon, so it wasn't one of no. those that we watched a lot. It wasn't um, like one of the movies that you could buy either. Like it wasn't yeah, just everywhere. It was really not super accessible until like you know the past like I don't know twenty years or so. But um, yeah, like I, I always had this movie in my brain as just like the especially that last glow fight scene. Uh, the the glow songs are just forever in my brain because he got that glow. <laughs> Man, no, see, we right. used to That's we all, used all to try to is. achieve the glow. You know what I'm saying? We felt like that was some real shit. You know yeah. what I mean? There's few different times that I whooped on a motherfucker's ass and felt like that was because I had the glow for a moment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fucked up around. You know, fucked up in eighth that grade. Glow, fucked around and caught the glow. Eighth grade, I fucked around and caught the glow on a few niggas, man. Straight up, Get this glow. Get some of this glow. <laughs> 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 Who's the master? No, definitely, uh, man. <laughs> I mean, the, every every part of that film, you know, I mean, when you, from the perspective of, of looking back on it mm-hmm. at an older age, you know, and on the whole does it hold up level, you know, you got to break that whole thing down into different parts, you know? Yeah. Yeah, let's actually talk about that because, well, you know, the film's total gross actually at the time because it was a hit. 
it made thirty three million dollars against a production budget of ten million dollars. So okay, it did do really well. Uh, it was a especially, bang. Yeah, uh, and you know, so yeah, uh, but and audiences loved it. It had eighty six. It has eighty six percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, but a fifty nine percent critics rating. And that's uh, why we're here. That's why we've that's started why court. Here. That's why we've got court in session right now. <laughs> Goddamn uh, critics said something foul about my man, Pop <laughs> Mac. And I won't hold it. I won't stand for it. We got to put it on put it on the docket. Yeah, yeah well, we're talking about a time in, in Hollywood when critics had absolutely no idea about, you know, what our culture was trying to represent and the people in Hollywood creating these films didn't either. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at certain parts of that movie, I mean, it was the, the, the dialogue and a lot of the setup was straight up cornball shit. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But the, it was just the fact that we were able to see some type of that representation on the screen that made us hype, you know what I'm saying? Especially when they were joining cultures on the camera like that. And it was, some hood shit, y'all, or, or you know, no, it, quote unquote hood shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. You got it's watered down hood shit for mm-hmm. sure, watered down hood. But you know, we get those elements. You you know, it doesn't seem put on, but it's like also this is a comedy in like very serious situations. So at some points, it's it is a little buffoonery, but it's like. That's the it, we're watching a movie like you know kung fu movies have buffoonery in it mm-hmm. at times right, right. Like, exactly dude get hit and be like oh, 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 oh. like you know crazy shit be in the, the kung fu movies so if they like you said they weren't really uh, aware of the culture really at the time yeah. it's like because like definitely in the time it's a perfect movie for its time. And it caught it captured that shit like in a capsule, and it keeps moving through, you know, generations and generations. Yeah, for sure. And they they followed a lot of the um, the normal tropes of some of those kung fu movies back in the day. You know, um, they kind of mimicked some of the different action scenes and and situations mm-hmm. that we would see. You know, like the whole fact of Shonuf trying to egg Bruce Leroy on to battle him, you know, and, and going and fucking with his family to make that whole thing come down. You know, that that's a that's a normal Kung Fu movie trope, you know what I'm saying, that they yeah, put exactly. into that. But wrote it really well in an urban fashion, you know what I'm saying, for the time. And I, I think that movie was a masterpiece. You know, as goofy as some parts were, and when you grow up and look at it, yeah, you know, it's like you can laugh at certain things and be like, oh, that was stupid. But when you were young, you know, you didn't, you didn't, you, you didn't have to worry about all those different things in society that you've learned and and made you feel like shit was corny. It was just a a, a fun movie to enjoy, you know. Exactly, yeah. this movie literally caught like you said it perfectly. This movie was a kung fu movie. Like if you to, <clears throat> if these guys have been all Asian characters. And and it was all dubbed audio, and you know everybody. We would have felt like we was watching a genuine kung fu movie. Like, yeah, he, you yeah. know, like you say, he gets he, he meets his villain at the beginning of the movie. He's faced with adversity. He tries yep. to find his journey. He's on his journey. All the while, the villain is poking around at his family, antagonizing him, and then eventually he got to go see the nigga and put hands on him. Yeah. The yeah, only thing that was missing, if it was really gonna follow that old school kung fu format, the vanity would have broke out with a fan that had blades on it and started fucking motherfuckers up too. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what it was missing. Yeah, I think that you guys definitely hit it on the head that this was like not understood by critics at the time because this was very new like or like it's it feels very fresh like uh, like there's not really a movie like this uh before this um Mm -hmm. and i think it's because one of the reasons is it hits on a very interesting time uh in filmmaking which is just it's one of the most disrespectful moments in film uh it's so like after Bruce Lee died, uh, there was a lot of what people called Bruce exploitation movies, uh, where you'd have movies uh, starring 
uh bruce lee lookalikes uh with names like yep. bruce kai bruce lie bruce lung um yep. here is actually a clip from one of those movies exit uh exit the dragon enter the tiger uh wow <laughs> uh starring bruce lie which is bruce lie was big man like this and it's he it's, was it's, a liar goddamn he was a liar <laughs> you know why bruce and, lie and Bruce Leroy is obviously like a com like because there were also uh that you know that happened with a lot of black actors too. Uh, they they had a lot of black actors playing Bruce Lee, uh, fake Bruce Lees. And oh this, yeah, this was a sort of a commentary on that, which I thought was cool. I mean, in a majority of the black exploitation films from back in the seventies, and you know all the action scenes, they were doing kung fu. Yeah, pimps. Yeah. They were they were yeah. doing kung fu moves in pimp suits. You know what I'm saying? He's absolutely right. Superfly is a kung fu master. That <laughs> Straight up. Fact. He chased the first fucking scene in the movie. He fucking chases a, a fucking crackhead down the goddamn alleyways and spooky places of all the hood. <laughs> And all the put some choppy chop chops on his ass. You know? Yeah, he's putting them goddamn foot on him. You know why? Yeah. Why, 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 why? And one of the Straight things up. I think that this movie does really well, like like you guys said, it is, or like you said, Bill, it it's a comedy. Like it is supposed to be funny. It is kind of tongue in cheek and goofy on purpose. Uh, because right. Leroy is trying to be Bruce Lee. He's trying to emulate Bruce Lee, but everybody else is like, dog, that's just really really corny even to the right. point of like you know there's the trope of a lot of bruce lee movies you know he doesn't ever sleep with anybody sleep with a woman like there's even like a scene i think is like enter the dragon where all the dudes go have sex with prostitutes and bruce lee just chooses to meditate the whole mm-hmm. night uh and so like bruce bruce lee... he knew he had to do some gangster shit <laughs> he knew he was gonna have to do some gangster shit but i can't be out here busting that right now i got <laughs> i got some stuff to do but you see, even, <laughs> right? But you even see Bruce Lee, Bruce Leroy Green. Uh, he takes that like you know that junior two hour movie, <laughs> Junior. Uh, he even takes that to to like in his own like that two hour movie to his like he his own doctrine for his whole life. He's like, oh, I'm, I can't sleep with a woman. Uh, yeah. Now so. you know that doctrine can get the diction. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Even back then, even back then, <laughs> as a as a youth, I felt very uncomfortable watching him pass up Vanity's pussy so much in that film. Right, and you it, felt it, like his brother in the movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's just <laughs> okay, it comes a point, you know, in life where you know, okay, you know, I got this, but you know, this is happening right now. This is gonna have to get the fuck out of the way, and when it and when it's vanity, you know, there's no excuse. But the, the, this scene, you know, he does, he does, he does, he redeems his dick, you know, by the end of the movie. So you know, I, you know, it, it all evens out. But it definitely played a big part in the film. His whole, you know, uh, well, yeah, maybe whole, he wouldn't have been. His, he he was just like. Just like no, get your pussy away from me, and that really made me uncomfortable. Maybe his dick wasn't worthy yet. You know, maybe his dick yeah, wasn't maybe. worthy yet. Maybe well, he just hadn't gotten to a spot in his life where his dick could match the vanity's <laughs> vagina. You know, maybe so. He needed to. You know, he needed he's... to. He needed to find the master within himself before he could master that pussy. I think it was just some light skinned nigga problem. That was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> light skinned, kinky head nigga. <laughs> <laughs> because that's another point of that movie, you know, and that whole time in film, that was definitely a light skinned nigga hero era, dark skinned nigga, nigga villain era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and his brother, his little brother was dark skin too, and he was like the nigga who was yeah, like, he, man, he why was don't you fucking fight? Goofball, like, yeah, he was fight, the man. stereotype. He was the fucking ball of stereotypes and shit like that. Right, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, but ball but it, you know, and 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 showing he probably couldn't swim either. He probably couldn't swim enough, either. He was all he was dark skinned too, you know what I'm saying? And all of his henchmen, they were dark skinned brothers too, you know what I'm saying? Everybody villainous. You know, was either well on the black side was 
was black as a motherfucker. That's all I'm gonna say. You know. What I mean? And I'm black, y'all. And I'm, that's what you need to put in there right there, Alex. <laughs> I'm black, y'all. And I'm that's black, one thing y'all. I always notice about that film. But you know, that's 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 on a deeper level. Of, no, you, you know, know what? I think that's societal consciousness. That yeah, that might be some societal consciousness being placed up in there. You know, Barry that was, Gordon. That, that was back in the day, though. You know what I'm saying? That was when, when that whole... Yeah, the, the paper, brown that, paper bag rule, man. Yeah, I, that, I don't know. That was before a lot of people, you know, for lack of a better term, woke up, you know. So, so you know. you're saying this is a film ahead of its time? Well, uh, well it was a, a film very of its time, I'd say. Of its more. time, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, we in, have, in yeah, that sense, light, yeah, because yeah, we do have the light skinned hero and the dark skinned villain. Uh, let but let and let's talk about ooh, uh, the what, glow, what glow. a villain, what a villain we have here with Julius Carey as show enough. Let's show the intro, intro here, my man, the great this nigga is show amazing. Enough. Don't you got the sound, Alex? Yeah, do y'all not hear Word. that? No, we can't hear it. Oh, shit. Oh, it's you all gotta good. share the sound when you share the screen. And let me tell you something, man. I don't know if y'all were, you know, running around back in the day, but those shades, those uh, those shades with the blinds. Oh, yeah, you know, with the right. blinds. That shit was a real thing back that in the day, That shit was cold. Man. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm not trying to shout him out, but Kanye did bring those back for us. Oh, man. Please, please, man. Get I'm the fuck out of here with all that a, bullshit. I'm, I'm talking I'm about the real day. I'm not talking I'm about that cereal, <laughs> toy in the cereal box bullshit. I'm talking about the real time. I'm just saying, like, I, that's the only time I actually saw some in circulation was at, like, the early 2000s. Yeah, because I, those, yeah. I, like, I always wanted a pair of them bitches. Like, and they was never to be found in the in the 90s. Like, the late 90s, mid-90s, they was no nah, that was way gone, man, about then. Yeah, and I ain't had, and I was Big Mac. <laughs> 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 yeah, those those shades are cool as hell. Uh, and and like we love Show Enough. Uh, and we do. He was we, on Briscoe County Junior too. I was just about to say. Uh, you one of the things one of the things we know him from is fucking Briscoe County Junior. Uh, hold on, I'm about to pull up a clip right now. Okay, Briscoe. Did you Briscoe share the sound County first? Junior. I, I I just turned the sound off because I was like, I don't know if. That's gonna end up recording since I'm the per- only person who can hear it. But <laughs> nice. But no, yeah, you didn't share the sound before you. Uh, oh shared yeah, the screen. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me do that. But do uh, that and then that, go back. That, to was show it Bruce Campbell? We gotta what? get his voice. It was Bruce Campbell. If you haven't seen this show, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some time. If you haven't seen this show, Briscoe County Junior. Briscoe is a cowboy who is out here, you know, doing cowboy shit, played by Bruce Campbell. And Shona plays what's his name, Bull. Uh, Lord Bowler. Bowler. Lord Bowler, who is a bad motherfucker, who's a bounty hunter, who will whoop your ass. Okay. So he basically is, he's basically shown up in the in the in the wild, wild west. Oh, <laughs> wow. Get out of here. He's That's pretty dope. Great. All right. I gotta look at that. Shouts out to that show. Yeah, it's not playing on me on my end. But you know what? Probably for the better that we can't hear it. Because we'd be getting all kind of violations from Warner Brothers with this one. <laughs> Maybe it feels like everyone's like every time I bring up Briscoe County Junior, I feel like nobody has heard of it. Yeah, I I, 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 I never I fucked know. with it. It Damn was like three seasons yeah, on familiar. television in the nineties, and like okay. nothing nothing got three seasons back so, then. You know what I'm oh, we oh, have sound now. Okay. Last man remaining at this table gets the job. Well, it's fine by me, Boulder, but I gotta warn you, I'm real hungry, and I could be here all day. Let's find out. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Dope. My, that, looks fun. <laughs> that looks fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, so much show. fun. So, yeah, he really turned it out on, like, on Briscoe, but this is the original, the show nut, the character, and I think this is his first big film. I, mean, I think he did a lot of like, like black films. I don't want to say black exploitation films, but like I would just say I think he did a lot of black films before this. But and he did not know nothing about no kung fu, martial arts, anything before he did this film. 
So yeah. I'd say he did a pretty damn good job not knowing, especially as fucking tall as he is, dude. Like he's to... tall as hell. Yeah, that was that was some some good action in the film, you know, especially when they got towards the last act and you know things got a little more serious, you know, with Eddie Arcady and and all yeah. everybody there. I mean, come on, right, we gotta yeah, get we gotta get deep into this stuff, man. Yeah, this let's. We had so many layers, man. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Eddie Arcady. Well, let's talk about like just the main plot. You know, Leroy Green, he's a young martial artist living in New York City. He trains tirelessly to attain the same level of mastery as the gr- great Bruce Lee. And then one night his life changes forever when he rescues television personality Laura Charles, played by Vanity, uh, from the evil businessman Eddie Arcadian. Uh, impressed by Leroy's bravery, Laura falls for Leroy, but to keep her safe, he will have to defeat a gang leader named Show Nuff, self-esteemed Shogun of Harlem. Uh, Let me ask y'all a question about Eddie Arcadian. Yeah. Because one of the main questions here on this show, does it hold up? Up. <laughs> One of the main questions is, how was the the performances? The performances is one of the main focuses. So I got to ask you, we'll start with Ray C. How do you feel about this villain's performance, this actor's performance? Uh... Eddie Arcadia. Eddie Arcane, uh, what was that? Christopher Murney or some shit, yeah. you know? That was yeah. uh, the. He, he didn't. He went on to do a few things here and there, you know, throughout his time. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the character that he played, you know, it was an over the top, you know, very stereotypical villain, villainous type of the man type of white character, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he was whitey. He was white. Yeah, yeah. He he didn't have you know any kind of you know conscious or soul in him you know whatsoever you know he didn't care about anybody that was in his circle, including um uh, the white chick. You know what what was her name? You know the, his little oh yeah high pitched voice. Lopper. Yeah, yeah. The little, you know, <laughs> but uh you know it's he he played to me uh, um. A perfect villain throughout the film because nowadays, you know, villains are either killed or 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 find the light in film and TVs. You know, they 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 either find a way to the light side and turn. Right, they find they find God before they go to prison. Right, yeah, shit like that. But, but <laughs> Eddie Arcadian was a fucking dick from the beginning. <laughs> All Even the in his final end. moment. It, all the way till he had no fuck. His back was all the way against the wall. Nothing changed. He didn't back down from his stance whatsoever. You know, you just a dick. Yeah, yeah. He's still and, trying uh, to make a deal, back. even even at the end. Word, you know. What did you think it, about Eddie Arcadian, Alex? What did you think about his performance? Uh, I thought his perf- honestly, I thought his performance was great because, like, again, yeah, he was his character isn't you know this three dimensional, uh like relatable character uh you don't really see where he's coming from he's just a dick through <laughs> that's her. it like for the moment like at the beginning where like homegirl is just like eddie I w- i'm hungry and i want to go home she's like shut your mouth fix your face i love it <laughs> i love yeah, it hey, oh uh, yeah like he seems like he seems like one of those guys who's never actually hit a woman but you know he if you heard that he did like, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I'm he's one of those. He's surprised. one of those why I order type of motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> to the moon, Alex. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> yeah, he is terrible. Uh, but yeah, like the actor, he, he's he's really dope. Well, I have. I sorry, didn't oh, think yeah. that. I thought it was a terrible performance until <laughs> until let me tell you, man. I was I was, re- I was rewatching this shit today, and I was like. Yo, this is kind of over the top, over the top. Like, this is some like Nicolas Cage over the top type shit. But then at the end, in the last act, the last fight scene, big fight scene, Leroy comes out there onto the onto Vanity's stage, and he's up the uh, what's his name? The villain, he comes up on this on the screen, Ed. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he yeah. He starts doing the like. He says, uh, what, is he, what, what was it? Damn. 
The guest oh, no, list no. has been made. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to pull it up. Oh, man, you got to pull it up. He says, yeah, the there's some great list, quotes. There's some amazing quotes. The guest quotes list has been made so that the game can be played or some shit like that. And I was like, yo. Then he did the like. <laughs> I was like, yo, this nigga killed it with that. This nigga is out here doing it today. Yeah, play the, that The classic right villain monologue. You know what I'm saying? Very I mean, classic. Very another, classic. Another, 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 you know, a, a trope that, that has has been revisited and millions of times, but they did it. Leroy, 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 went on. Leroy, Leroy. This one. Leroy! Leroy, 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 Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to my little party in your honor, Leroy. Let it play one more. Yeah, Let it play. Right. That's the part. <laughs> the guest list has been compiled so that you go out in style. That's it right <laughs> there. Like, oh, That's the line right there. Is cold the Arcadian got running. bars. <laughs> bars, nigga. Bars. That nigga cold blooded. We said that shit. The guest list has been compiled so that you go out in style. <laughs> what? Uh, Cold blooded. Yeah. Another great line. I'm I'm not gonna fish the whole movie to find it, but there was a line where Shogun says, uh, just get him to get him to the designated place at the designated time, and I'll designate his ass. For dismemberment. <laughs> 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 like one of my favorite yeah. lines of the movie. I mean, um, I, I love the whole cabal that Eddie Arcadia put together of villains. You know what I'm saying? That yeah, where did these is. niggas come from? <laughs> Nobody ever shouts out those 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 that that crew of villains that he pulled together. You know, like the fucking Rogue Squadron. You know what I mean? <laughs> they should have got names. I feel like they all should have had names, and then we would have had a more connection to them. I was thinking that because the white dude with all the chains and like like big fat white Mister T he was like a Combination Word. of Mr. T and Butterbean, like, and he got his pants pulled down at the end, like that shit was crazy. I was like, "Yo, this dude is wild." So yeah, yeah we should have looked at uh, uh, Craven the the Hunter over here, like. This <laughs> you are. That's the Craven. That's the real Craven right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. That's Craven. Uh, <laughs> Give that man anything he wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's kind of like that scene yeah, in Star Wars uh, or Empire Strikes Back where just uh, uh, Darth Vader gets all the bounty hunters together. Yeah, or it's like <laughs> what they tried to do in, in, in Deadpool when they were trying to recruit the fucking X-Factor crew and shit like all right. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, that, that was yeah this iconic, iconic scene. Um, and we got a lot of iconic actors in this movie too. Like you know, we talked about how Ty Mac and uh, was like this is his first time acting, but uh, this also, also Ray Ray was his first. Yeah, yeah look, William H Macy 12, was 12 uh, Vanity's old. Vanity's uh, manager in the movie. His yeah, first right. movie William H. as well. William H Macy is JJ. Uh, we got uh, Chaz Palmi Palmieri. Oh, he, was, word. Uh, he, was, he was like one of the just the hood. He was hood number two. Look at that. <laughs> Um. Yeah, a lot of big like movie icons in this movie, just in in the background. Mike Starr as Rock. Uh, he's you know a character actor who's been in a whole bunch of stuff. Indeed. Um. But, Let me ask uh, you a question. Now. Yeah, yeah. What about the people who weren't so famous? What happened to Jimmy? Do you know what happened to Jimmy? Jimmy. No. Wait. Which one was Jimmy? He. That I think was I know his, who you're talking about. That was his Asian homie that could fight real yeah, good. Too, yeah. Right? He, he had was, the real moves, though. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Woo! Talk that shit. He Talk was getting shit. it in. You he know, was, I mean, yeah. No, no, go ahead. I, some of the some what? of the characters they had some, you know, some real moves going on in there. The fight choreography was was that's one thing that got it over a little bit better too. It was it was a goofy and 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 fun film, but at the same time, the fight scenes were 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 kind of brutal for certain standards. You know what I'm saying? Like when. When Shonuff made his first interest into that movie theater, and he called anybody, somebody told him to shut the fuck up, and he he was like, "Any fifty of you motherfuckers come down here and tell me to get me to shut up." That first dude that came down from the aisles, 
He bashed his face on the stage like five times. <laughs> yeah, he, like, he started fucking people up, foot. breaking yeah. arms and shit like that. Yeah, he gave, you know? he gave it was brutal. Work, he gave him some Brooklyn style Molly walks. <laughs> Word, man. It was a truly, uh, the, and there were brutal parts in that film, you know, for, for, I was for like, that was, what it was trying what, to be. I was like, what style is that? It was brick style, man. He Word. His ass in the head. That's Harlem. That was that was 127th Street Malcolm X Boulevard style right there. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, explain to the people how like vividly real that opening scene is, like in nah, the, the movie theater scene. That movie theater scene is incredibly uh true to form, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you're not gonna walk into an AMC in 2023 in the middle right. of New York City <laughs> and see that scene happening. But it's not very far off any given moment when you go uptown to Magic Johnson Theater in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, you know what I mean? It can happen. But, you know, this is completely out of control on yeah. this film. But it's for a movie. But at the same time, right. mm. they just they just overblew the the reality of mm. of things that happen, you know, of course, to this day, I'm not gonna contain it just to New York City, but anywhere, you know, some crazy motherfucker jumps up in front of the screen and starts talking a bunch of shit. You're gonna have somebody that's gonna jump up and tell them to shut the fuck up. <laughs> gonna... All right. I'll tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you right now. Guilty <laughs> as charged. I literally that happened to me at the Barbie premiere. <laughs> I had to I had to get into it with some dude who literally was screaming craziness in the middle of the Barbie movie. I mean, I literally was on the train last week, not to get too far off on a tangent, but no, to no. relate it to New York City. I was on the train last week on the Q train heading downtown to meet my brother, and some some cat was on there just like faded. Some brother, he was just young young cat. Just faded and and just like really on some gorilla shit, like mm. you know anybody want to fuck with me type shit, I'm ready. <laughs> but but you know, but he was just drunk and and talking a bunch yeah. of shit. But somebody got fed up, jumped up and said, "Why don't you shut the fuck up?" <laughs> and oh, they proceeded one. to get into an incredibly humongous brawl. And you know, I mean. New York City is definitely still New York. That type of Yo, thing. Yo, right. I saw that exact situation happen on the train. <laughs> like, like, it don't two think weeks that ago. It won't happen. Don't think that it won't happen. It yeah, ain't it, out yeah. here in New York it's City. Just not all movie theaters. It happened. You yeah. get it anyway. No. I was, uh, I was Yo, actually Alex, just watching you got to tell about the train. Look, after this show, you got to tell Ready to see about that train incident when you oh, woke gosh. up on the train. You gotta tell that story. Yeah, as soon as he said this. train, I was like, Yeah, I think I've had a, I got a lot of train stories, but I, I know which train story oh, you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know off, yeah. off camera. Oh, but, yeah, um, off camera. Off <laughs> but uh, it is uh, it is funny because like I was just watching a documentary about like it was it was following uh, the, the son of the guy who brought the green hornet. Uh, films to New York uh, uh, theaters, like after, wow. like, like, like in the after it, it, it like, you know, come and gone. Uh, his dad was like had the idea of it's like he was mostly putting on children's movies, and he's like, yeah. I gotta switch it up, and because there's I'm not making enough money, so they had the idea of getting the rights to Green Hornet and hmm. 20th Century Fox was like, uh, whatever, this is movie, this show wasn't that successful, uh, but they didn't kind of have like a re resurgence. Uh, cause people were fucking loving it. And he's like, people were just, you know, dancing in the aisles and like, kar- like play karate fighting in the aisles, throwing popcorn. Like, it was insanity. So it was like, it, it made me think of the last dragon when I heard him talking about, uh, those, those, uh, those vibes in the yeah. theater. Yeah, right. Man. Man. Um, but yeah, back to, back to enough, uh, yeah, enough of my rant. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what did you guys think of like we did talk a little bit about the the fight scenes before, uh, but what did you guys think of Tymac like per, in particular as like in as a fighter and as an actor in this movie since it's his first performance? Bill, I'll let you go first. What? <laughs> he was doing a great job, man. I I thought 
I felt like, yeah, even though he was learning how to act, mm-hmm. his character didn't need to come off like he didn't like he knew how to do anything. Like he was supposed to be the weirdo. Uh, his not knowing how to act might have helped him in, you know, like his ability to pull off his character. Like, would you have believed that character if? Wesley Snipes was playing that character, you know what I mean? Like right. who was up for this Mag, Yeah. Tom Mag did do a really good job with this. And I I'm pretty positive Tom Mag trained with the same guy who trained uh Wesley Snipes. Oh. That so, would make uh, sense. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, like they uh they they were really close like, you know, not really close, I don't want to say, but they knew about each other, knew each other and um I think Wesley turned it down, if I'm not mistaken. And they asked if Tom Mac wanted to do it because the same trainer, you know what I'm saying? Same mm-hmm. guy trained him. So they were like, well, he was like, I know a guy who would be perfect for his role. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Wesley looked too much like a villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He's uh, something, it's not, it's get something that dark. Nigga with a, get that nigga with a gun Word in up. Hand, quick. Up, make, sure, that make sure we do his audition in a day or we might not see that nigga. <laughs> Put some drugs dark in about that his performance. <laughs> Word. Dark about his performance. But see, uh, uh, to, 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 some crack on him. to build on what you're saying right there, though, Bill, I mean, you know, that was a, the, one of the most relatable things about Bruce Leroy was the fact that he was such a cornball dude and you know, a lot of people could relate to that. You know, me personally also, because you know, I've always been a cornball nerd. <laughs> so right. when that movie was out, and and we saw, you know, this goofy little motherfucker that everybody was picking on get vanity and whoop ass by the end of the movie, it made a bunch of you know cornballs feel like, hey, you know, there's there's hope for us out there. But yeah. For that real, was yeah, like the only thing it. that we didn't, you know, take into account that is the fact that we didn't have, you know, the the body and skills of time act. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. And also, also, ain't but one vanity. You ain't never right. gonna find a bitch look like that. Like, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So there was, you know, at the same time that it gave a lot of us, you know, hope. It was a lot of false, you know, hope at the same time because you're not gonna be a kung fu master, and your black ass ain't never gonna be light skinned either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not the light skinned hero. I'm glad you just brought so. that. Bring that. Go back a little bit. I'm glad you brought this clean, this clip up because we get a scene where Tom Mac is trying to basically get Ed to stop fucking with Manny, uh, Laura. Part, you want me to go back to this? Yeah, go back just a little bit before the cop was right there. Right, yeah, you start it right here. You can start it right, right. here. Um, Do you want sound? And so, no, we don't need sound because he just tells Ed tells this like all these niggas get whooped. All his actual henchmen get, like, <laughs> yeah. get their ass beat. Yeah. And then the security guard, who happens to be a nigga, dark skin, and <laughs> like, thank you, he, thank you. He's like, he's like, go get him. <laughs> and you can see in this nigga's face, he don't want to go over there. He don't no, he ran off. Go right back to that scene where they showed that brother. See how he leaves the he exits and you'd never see him again. Watch this. Yeah. Okay. He, he he flips this guy. And now watch the brother. Flips. Watch the brother. When the security guard comes yeah. in. <laughs> now keep and going. And he's out. gone. No, I think he's no, gone for gonna, the rest I, of the movie after that. No, second, he's not then... gone. He's not, gonna, he's, gonna, he's not gone for the rest of the movie because he comes up a little bit later because yeah, everybody's gone. Of... Everybody got dusted and he was sitting there by himself like uh, and then Ed is like get him. What you doing? Like, don't get him. He's like, oh, <laughs> like shit. I, I was go. really hoping to avoid this. <laughs> oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, he comes back and tries. Wow. Nope. And he gets the business. I was like, you didn't hit all these other niggas with a stick? <laughs> right. Yeah. He gets the grand finale ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> he hit him with a stick and the motherfucker looked like he hit him with some goddamn paddle, the electric paddle. He's like, he hit him with a defibrillator. He's like, and make sure he whoops a distinguished nigga's ass too. Put a tie on that motherfucker. <laughs> um, this nigga was just at work. He was not a gangster at all. He was just <laughs> a security. Jo- he was a security yeah. guard, dog. Word. <laughs> yeah. 
All of a sudden, he, he tried to pull off some kung fu moves. And shit. Nah, he did. Yeah, he didn't try, wake he up. Tried. He didn't wake up thinking that was what was gonna happen. Was gonna happen. Yeah, he did. That he did all. lead he did with the kick. He did not dress for that. <laughs> he did. He would have wore different. Kick. Sh- he would have yeah. wore different shoes if he knew he was gonna be in this. Place. <laughs> he yeah, needs like his own spinoff. And movie. he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like he mentioned, what? yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like what, what you want me to do? He he led with the kick with a lot of with a lot of yeah. confidence. He's like, oh man. Uh, he's like, I can see a spinoff. I can see a spinoff movie based on him. <laughs> just on him, yeah, just on him. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The last also, security guard. We were <laughs> there was like talks of a spinoff or like a, a reboot years ago. I think it was like back in two thousand. Yeah, it was I have the article here. Like in 2008, Columbia Pictures is developing a remake of the cult 1985 what? film with none other than Samuel L. Jackson set to star as show enough. Obviously, this never happened. Good. Uh, and uh, I think the, yeah, it's not Wu-Tang like the nigga plans, who plays RZA, up dead. Like, why would you go get Samuel L. Jackson to play a nigga who's alive? Too old, man. Nah, who's nah, the nah. same this, age? Who's yeah. like the same age as this nigga? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he yeah he is dead now, but in, in 2008 he was alive. And yeah, they're both pretty much yeah, arguably the same age. Uh, so wait a minute, show enough is show enough is dead in real life. Oh yeah, Julius. Yeah, yeah. Julius, okay, sorry, away, I, I, I forgot he ago. passed away. I forgot he passed away. Yeah, yeah rest in peace to him, and rest in peace to Vanity. Vanity, God yeah. damn. Yeah, there's no way to do a remake of that without bringing the OGs in. Yeah, to make like, cameos. Well, we do, you know what I'm saying? Tom Atkins is still Tom around. Act. But fuck that. He ain't enough. He ain't enough. (laughs) Before I go further, put me on solo screen because I got to show this. I have a Timac signed poster that he gave me at WinterCon here in New York a couple years ago. That is incredible. From The Last Dragon. With the glow. I'm so glad that you brought that up because I heard this on the internet and I first I thought, man, this is weird, stupid shit and say. And then I saw the movie again today and I'm like, oh, fuck it. Now I got to bring it up. <laughs> was, was, was Bruce Leroy the first person to go Super Saiyan? <laughs> yeah, I, I think they bit thinking... that. They bit I... that from there. I was getting KO Ken vibes. I wasn't thinking say Super Saiyan, but I was thinking no KO Ken. No, see, for sure enough, had the KO Ken. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. Oh man, that's a good point. Yo, did I just fuck up the world right now? <laughs> uh, what's your My what's your is quiet? <laughs> well, Sorry, see, y'all, talking about, y'all talking about the anime that came after my generation with that weird, like, big eye. Do no, like, oh well, shit! Well, I don't. I'm not into Dragon Ball Z and all that Dragon Ball corn ball crap. That came. Dragon that's generation. That's that anime after my generation after that. that started getting like tiny tunes and shit. No, 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 no. Dragon Ball Z would have been right after this no, movie no, came out, not too far. No, after no, 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 no. It's like 1987, 1989. No, no, no. <laughs> Ready C is not about, <laughs> not no, about that life. No. Um, I'm not saying that they didn't trust me. It. That shit that wasn't it. that shit wasn't popping back then. It, it might have been in '98 when you were born. I'm not but saying no. it was popping. I wasn't saying it was popping, but it, that, I'm just saying that the it didn't matter that back then. So it, after, it didn't uh, matter. It didn't matter. No, my only point is that they they bit this movie, right? They like time. maybe inspired. Time. By, yeah. That's that's what Tom I was Mac. trying to say. That that's what I'm saying. Tom was the first one to go Super Saiyan. That's what I'm yes. saying. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. They came, that shit comes from there. It has yeah. To. I, they, yeah, that is Goku one of the and the uh, Goku, the the lure where he his character comes from, comes from a character that trans has transformations and stuff. He never got no gold, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't like got the glow. He ain't had the glow, you know what I'm saying? So I think they took it. It was a good choice to take it though. It was good. But if you don't take something, take that. <laughs> True. <laughs> True indeed. Yeah, uh, one um, was it they say uh, I uh, no one quote is uh, good writers borrow from other writers, great writers steal from them. 
<laughs> That's um, right. But uh, yeah, like, I do remember this being like a like one of the biggest things that I remembered about this movie. Again, like it's not a movie that I watched every weekend, like some of these other ninja movies. But this is a, the scene that I always remembered was the glow, uh, that aesthetic, and the way that they fought each other, like, and the way that they reacted uh to the attacks it felt very like i was like ninja star wars or something (laughs) like it was so cool what did you guys think of like the the the, this fight scene in particular i think that um a a big point that everyone overlooks is the fact that shonuff acquired the globe before bruce leroy yes yeah that's something i'm not watching this time too. too though I thought about that from day one. Like, you know, he 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 found the master before this dude. He's way more worthy. Yeah, and you kind of see how Bruce Leroy is like shocked by this. He's like, yo, you got the glow? How did you you you're like uh Yeah, it's like when a broke ass nigga shows up in high school with some with some fresh ass Jordans. And you like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, man, it's I very just- and at the same time, it's very compared to Star Wars, like you just alluded to earlier, because the glows being different colors represent, you know, light and dark sides of of the whole uh, mastery. Um, mm-hmm. just, just like in Star Wars, you know, when they, they want to talk about the dark side or the Sith, all of their lightsabers and, you know, and their glow is red. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just like, you know, show enough. And mm-hmm. when you talk about the light side, you got these upper ends of the spectrum, you know, greens and yellows and shit with the Jedi. Mm-hmm. And and your boy uh Bruce Leroy's glow was yellow. Yeah, so it's and, uh, like also the Star Wars characters, the, the the Empire characters, when they shoot their lasers, theirs is red and when the when the um I don't know Republic is shooting the river, the rebels are shooting their shit's blue, you know. Right, so, right. You know, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's always a signifier of like good and evil, and they did a good job of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's in- interesting. Uh, yeah, like that that color design, uh, which really shows the contrast between the characters and everything. Um, and it is uh before I yeah like we talk a little bit more about just the that final fight, the the dynamic of the villains is all just kind of interesting for this movie because this is a very low stakes movie yeah it's not like we're not talking about world ending stuff uh somebody and the way that the... your bitch and see how low stakes <laughs> it is nigga well it, I'm, yes. talking about no, low stakes. It's, I'm saying it starts out better like, be it's... as fine as hell nigga the stakes <laughs> is as high as it gets <laughs> the stakes are like really low uh and then it just kind of like escalates because eddie arcadian goes crazy uh because right. You know, Eddie Arcadian, I guess he is the did main... go a little crazy, didn't he? Yeah, and he and, just, and he even um, mind. <laughs> and and Shonuff's motivation was was just as noble as uh, Bruce Leroy's. Like he was only uh, Bruce Leroy was only trying to achieve his you know uh, um, mental stasis, you know, or whatever right, of kung yeah. fu. But but at the same time, you know, you had Eddie Arcadian. Offer uh, Shonuff a big briefcase of money, and he was like, "I don't need your cash. All I need you is to lead me to Bruce Leroy." He just wanted to whoop his ass and attain the glow. He didn't care about the cash, you know what I'm saying? So everybody's purpose was noble, and everybody was trying to whoop the other person's ass. So at the end of the day, yeah. it was just a big fucking fight, and whoever side you were on is 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 up to you. But nobody was more noble than the other. Kung Fu movie. That is a good point because yeah, show enough doesn't even take the the money in in the in the scene that I was mentioning where yeah you know, he says yeah get him yeah it, it time, wasn't his motivation at all yeah not at all uh he just wanted to fight him uh even like and that's that's kind of like you know the the we we even see in that theater scene that that's his whole motivation from the jump he just wants to prove that he's the baddest and he knows that you know he's been hearing all this shit about bruce leroy he's like i know i gotta beat this guy if <laughs> this i'm this going to be catch bullets with his teeth bullets with his teeth teeth <laughs> <laughs> and he said that would yeah. never that would never come up later in this movie. He's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, as a youth, you don't expect you still and don't even put that don't. together. You of still don't put not. that together. That was one of the most like oh shit moments, you know, when he woke up 
after he got bust and he had that shit. And then what happens right at that very scene? Let me hear it, Bill. Let me hear it. You, you are like the last <laughs> dragon. <laughs> you, they said it real low. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Showing up like as we seen you earlier, he. Last uh, I might just keep doing that shit. I might have to Yo, that. if you can forget about My- it, it's gonna be in your head for at least forty eight hours. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just one of those earworms, man. It's such a the music in this movie is really great. There are times, I guess, like one of you my why, right? complaints. Of, it's Barry Gordy, baby. Barry Gordy, right, right. But we got but, but we got to shout out the the actual um the 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 person who sang that song, Dwight David. Dwight David, yes. And uh, look, man, there were so many people on the soundtrack. This was Barry Gordy's way of saying like. Yo, I'm that nigga, one. And also, two, he was like, I'm about to get all these songs off. Like, <laughs> y'all think that I'm about to be playing with y'all? This is all Please. free advertising. They Come say on, you, you got Stevie Wonder million. on the motherfucking soundtrack. That upset three, stomach? He got three songs on this motherfucking like He wrote, like, three songs with these motherfuckers. Get like, out it was here, crazy. man. So, look, man, I'm trying to tell you, this is Barry Gordon being like, look, I'm, they made $33 million off the movie. Man, they probably made another 50, 80 million off the fucking music. Uh, <laughs> the the bars, the bars, boy, what? The no, bars over here. Thank you. Thank the you. Rim the bars the night. What? Oh, oh, oh. That's what Barry Gordy was saying when the movie came out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Everybody in the theater was jumping up when that shit came. Yo, it, it, it <clears throat> filled so many fucking emotional gaps. Watching that movie, you know what I'm saying. From everybody had a, a, something that they could enjoy about it right. at the top. Yeah, we got to we got to talk about the best song in the movie. Um, the song. Oh Manny. God. Oh, oh God. shit! I thought you were gonna play the Betty Boop song. I hate this song. Okay. <laughs> it was so <laughs> bad. Yo, I was like, yo, is he gonna? Is he gonna keep playing this? <laughs> like, <what> is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope he don't keep uh, playing this. I hate this song. See, so you know much. what that was though? Let me tell you what that was. That was a direct bite on uh Beach Street right then and there. Because the way that they did that whole like ending dance scene with the stage mm. and the, the main rap, if you look at how you know they did that whole funeral for Raymo at the end of Beach Street. It's in the exact same vein, and that movie came out one year before this did. You know, they, mm. they, I'm telling you, that was an exact copy of the ending of Beach Street. Man, there's a lot of biting going on. We're talking about so much biting in this episode of Does It Hold Up? It is insane. Look at you this. You got it right there. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Let's go. Man. Yeah, it's and it's it, it. That's one of like one of my kind of complaints about the movie, or not complaints. It, it's just it. It's a weird pacing thing where every once in a while it just they're just like, and now it's a music video, like where they just Hold play on, this like is a musical. This this well, to me, this was a kung fu for lack music. of yeah yeah. You're right about that. I I would definitely say that this was you know a, a, a musical in some form or fashion. You know, because music played a very big part in that film, man. Definitely take the music yeah, out, and this fun. movie kind of sucks. I mean, oh, you yeah. Know what I mean? like, <laughs> if you take the music out, this is just kind of True. a bland ass movie. True. It doesn't because a lot of the music True. is really like telling a story of the movie, like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's really talking about the glow and troubles that you're having. And no, like, no, yeah, yeah. Shit, so, I, I, I'm just saying, so, so, so I'm just was saying, a huge your, artist at that point, time, though, Alex. It would have been weird to me if this if it didn't have enough music, like. They had enough music to make it a musical to where it wasn't like off. I didn't feel like it was coming out of nowhere. Right. You know, the first, like like we said, we get the barges like first, first thing first, like right? We get boom, mm-hmm. and we get rhythm of the night, boom. So, and yeah. then you hear another song, and then you hear another song. When you get to that point, it's like, okay, this is a music. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, right. in your mind, right. you can just go ahead and say, okay, okay, this is what we're doing. Okay. Because it's not, because when they drop those songs, it's not background music. It's like the whole, it's that, it's that's what's going right. on in the movie right, right. now. It's when they played that DeBarge yeah. shit, when that DeBarge joint was playing, 
it was just a debarge video. That was it. Right, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it was. It was a music video. It was the word. one they used on MTV. The word, the dancing. Look at my man back there. You got yo, this that's what it is. It's and the one certainly... they did later, like in the third act, what was it? Uh, Fire by um Homegirl. I oh, what right. It was. Right. Eddie Arcadian was getting all hot in the pants for her. He was like, Oh, who is this exactly, <laughs> he, he was all like, about his uh, old fuck Cindy Lauper. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that was actually background footage that wasn't supposed to get out, but they was like, let's use it. He just was he was mad horny that day. She was just looking good. <laughs> that wasn't acting. That wasn't angle. That was some ill shit. And if man. you think that I'm lying about that, fact check me. Put it in the comments. <laughs> uh, and then at, at the end, uh, you know, uh. Everybody gets what they want, <laughs> or at least all the bad guys do. Uh, like leading up to the end, uh, Eddie Arcadian he he kidnaps Vanity so uh, he can lure Leroy into a into uh, a fight with Shogun. So Shogun gets right. finally. But also, gets... we forget one important part. Mm, right before that? that, or right, I guess at the same time, Shogun destroys Bruce Leroy's. Parents, pizza place. Oh what? yeah, that's yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was the whole middle part of the, the film that gave Leroy his motivation to well, chase him the, down. Right, go throw them hands. He had to go look for him after that. Because I got to find you. You gonna mess with my <laughs> dudes and my and my pop? <laughs> and you threw my little brother in the trash can. Man, it's gonna be fighting. His hands getting thrown. But yeah, they tore up the whole damn place. But the thing that kept getting me. My dudes was throwing the dough at the niggas and hitting them in the face. <laughs> and the funniest part of this movie, funniest part of this movie, the Cindy Lauper bitches song is playing on the jukebox with the TV screen on it. And he was like, who put this shit on? <laughs> Shut up, bitch. I don't own that. <laughs> I don't own that. <laughs> oh man, when he put that shit! Oh my god, that shit was so fucking uh, funny, dude. That's probably the classic. funniest line in the movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, had plenty of uh, comedy moments, you know. Where it, are you it, gonna play out? Especially when he he got a little bit. Oh shit! So, <laughs> who played this garbage? <laughs> It was so believable. You just kind of stop what he was saying. Like, yeah, what? he was dead ass serious. He was, was like dead ass serious. <laughs> hey, wait, he wasn't playing with nobody. Up. He was not playing with nobody when he said that shit. Nope. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I actually want to sample that part. Shut up, yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm use that for my thing. new drop when I'm DJing somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that for my new drop. Shut up, bitch! Anybody <laughs> comes up to me and requests a song, I'm gonna put that drop on. Shut up, bitch! Shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought about that earlier today. I was like, somebody needs to sample this. Shit. This shit is hilarious. <laughs> Please remind me to sample that, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, the whole time, uh, Eddie, I mean, not Eddie, Shogun is uh, trying to, Shogun, Shonuff, the Shogun of Harlem. He's been trying to goat Bruce Leroy into a fight, like, the whole movie. Now he's got his motivation. Uh, he's like, hey, I wouldn't have gone and kidnapped the bitch, but, you know, this white man did, so I'll take advantage of this situation. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to like, bitches. But since you did, I'm going to. Beat his ass. That's a, step. <laughs> That's a step too far. Um, and before we talk about the last fight, I, just, yeah, uh, I know yeah. it... I'm sorry, you got me laughing off that. Like, showed up is over there, like, yo, I wouldn't have committed a felony. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just, you know, went to his house and <laughs> yeah. his ass. Yeah. <laughs> we went and <laughs> fucked up a few of his pizzas, and now you were right. getting bitches and shit. <laughs> Like, I stole his mama's stereo, but, like, <laughs> you yeah, will like, kidnap not... the bitch. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck that shit. It wasn't me. I'm, I'm going to just whip this nigga's ass. 
Shownuff is on probation. I cannot be <laughs> fucking with the oh, word. That. Yeah, you guys yeah. are known fellas. I can't be <laughs> Show enough works at UPS, motherfucker. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> This is all this is all up. taking place over one weekend, nigga. I gotta go to work Monday. Oh, uh, he's there in the shorts. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, the same hey. hair and all that shit. <laughs> that nigga get mad. That nigga get mad, he get the glow. I <laughs> word up. You better use that glow to seal some stamps, nigga. <laughs> Um, but then we get like our big uh, fight scene. This is sort of Bruce Lee Roy's warm up scene where you know he's knocking out all the bounty hunters who, who the hired goons. Uh, and then uh, we have the super villains, the <laughs> <Batman laughs> <Rose Gallery. laughs> um, his rose gallery. Yeah, the whole yeah, the, <laughs> the owls. <laughs> the <court of> owls. <laughs> Uh, and then his, he, you know, he's having a little bit of trouble since you know we got this big dude and they got to do with the chain. But then his homies come to the rescue. I thought this was a really great. Oh, moment. I love that scene right there, bro. I love that scene when the yeah, gods right. come through and fucking smash shit. Yeah, it was like, probably. I mean, it was definitely the best fight scene part. Like, and they came in just like Return of the Dragon, where all the like. Slaves students. and prisoners get, rel- all, yeah, get released. Yeah, the students and, and then they come, start through. running out and then they start whooping ass. Rumble and so it, that, the, Again, they did a great job of bringing in the elements of kung fu movies. Man, that we have for good. Genera- like For a whole generation before this, it was just people coming up on kung fu movies. And then they were able to put it out there and revive the... Really, this movie revived that energy for like kung fu movies. After this movie, we get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And after Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we get what we call on this show the 90s, the Ninja 90s, where you just got mad movies that have to do with ninjas. And so, yeah, this movie really brought back kung fu, karate, whatever you want to call it, and martial arts in the theaters. Absolutely. Yeah, and and uh, we you, speaking of Ninja Turtles... We do get, uh, like we mentioned earlier, little Ernie Reyes Jr. in this scene. Oh, actually, this is this is a homeboy, uh, which I did want to talk about this for. Oh, a Ernie bit. is back there though. But yeah, yeah he's yeah. back there. He, he starts to shine Jimmy, a little man, bit because Jimmy was whooping ass and he had the nunchucks going. And I'm like, yo, this nigga should have been a star. How many motherfuckers are in this movie that should be like stars today? Right? Yeah, like he's definitely and uh, like we mentioned here on. Uh, doesn't hold up. He's our Asian superstar, one of Asian many. Superstar. Uh, because yeah, he he's tiny he's, Asian uh, superstar. No, little Asian. Superstar. <laughs> well, he, not even Ernie Reyes Jr. Uh, um, I, I, I need to find the actor's name, but he's like incredible. Like honestly, the whole movie, he's a really good actor. Uh, he's like charismatic and funny. Uh, and his he's character quippy, arc, quick. yeah. Uh. And he's he has a cool arc too, where he like he, <laughs> and kind of a funny shtick where he doesn't know how to fight. Oh, but like he's been training the whole time with everyone else. But he, I, I guess the whole thing great. is he's just afraid of getting into a fight. I think that's like his basically right. his whole thing. Uh, but now at the end when he's basically in a life or death situation where he has to fight someone who's really going to hurt him, um, he overcomes that fear, and we see and, that he's actually yeah, he nice even with seems- it. He even seems shocked himself when he like pops dude in the head and he's like, "Oh, I hit him and it didn't hurt me. <laughs> right. It hurt him." Right. It's like the 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 eighties shit where you know motherfucker will whoop somebody's ass and then stare at their fist like, "Oh my god, did that? Right. Did my fist did that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I liked how they did that though. They played to the whole like, look, we're out here trying to be Bruce Lee. Like, we want to be Bruce Lee and it was motherfuckers like really in real life, like whoa, whoa, what's a whoa, 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 whoa. this like, guy? Was, yeah, you know. What I saying? remember was, running out of the theater with my homeboys, and we as soon as the movie was over, we came out of the theater. We were trying to whoop each other's asses in the fucking parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, uh, that's just funny. Yeah, he's uh, Bruce Lee. Is, yeah, he's just like such a 
impressionable person you know he was uh with his look and like the sounds he would make uh and he was, he was iconic so and obviously people disrespectfully tried to emulate him in movie studios and stuff like that uh but yeah like that was just basically homeboy's plan his whole life but then he finally gets this moment where he can actually fight <laughs> I like that little moment where they just he's like, hey, yeah. Bruce Leroy, I can fight. <laughs> yeah. But it's also a 1970s trope. The hero looks over at his homie. The homie's like, hey, and the other homie's like, yeah. hey, like, yeah. And then they go back to play. Yeah. I'm glad I'm yeah. glad the villains took these 12 seconds off from trying to fight us so we can <laughs> acknowledge each other's, you know, existence, right? Yeah, that was very kind of them. Uh, and then we get Ernie but, Reyes Jr. The, this I'm glad you started here because when he hit it, hit hit play, he, he oh, said, Ernie Reyes Jr. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I Ernie Reyes Jr. You know, and this isn't even the most impressive part, but that was just like a cool. No, intro. no, he, I, it, it, yeah, it was a great intro. I'll, I'll skip but to he the, had yeah. a really good kung fu trope as well. You hurt my homie, now you got to die. Yeah. No, <laughs> what what <laughs> said? What Delory said? Now I got to cut you. Now I, now I got to, to cut, cut you. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they were both like, uh, both of these actors. You know, I. I'll you know I'll let y'all talk a little bit more about these uh uh this scene in general while I try to find this actor's name because I I gotta give this guy what some this time. scene oh yeah no let me talk about that a little bit more because Jimmy that nigga was kicking ass nigga because he there's a scene coming up I mean there's a part coming up in this scene where he's hitting them nunchucks them nunchakus I was like damn this nigga really hey wait a minute this yeah, dude the might man be one in. of the best he might want to be look right here. He might be one of the best on the show. I mean, in the movie. Like, yeah, bro, well, I'm not doing that. That right that, there. That was another thing, too. I mean, that's that's that that's another, you know, Hollywood thing like that. You can't have these, you know, a movie about Kung Fu with Asians in right, it and I mean, have them get, get off the most. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this yeah. it wouldn't be right. That'd be like, you know, having a a hip hop movie, uh, 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 an, an Asian hip hop movie, but then the the black dude is the wackest rapper in the movie. Nah, right. nah. <laughs> yeah. he's gonna rhyme his ass off. In the, well, in you the know Asian what's funny about movie. that? I'm so glad you mentioned that because in this movie we have a situation where we haven't talked about three of my favorite characters in this movie. The three Asian dudes who are like hip hop and French. And hip. <laughs> nah, but then, I was but waiting then got, for somebody to get to that. And then you got the black dude who's walking around acting all Asian. So, that, like, it was a crazy <laughs> You talking that about those three dudes? The three dudes who was over the uh, the the the, the um, fortune cookie the fortune factory. Cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they. What was so ill about that is that they were they were Asian dudes, but they were like playing the black stereotype. You know what I'm saying with right. the, with their dialogue. With, I remember when Bruce Lee walked up at first, and he was like, "Where's the master?" And they were like, "Motherfucker, there's no master here. It ain't no slaves either." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you must have got, you must have forgot you was free. Like, hey, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, hey, it was funny. Was, like one of the dudes wearing a shirt like from, like he was from the Juice Crew. He was wearing yeah. like, mesh, mesh, yeah. see through joints. Like, I, I love like, those dudes, man. Those were the fucking biggest characters in the whole movie, man. Those yeah, were my niggas, real. man. And then they just shut the door, and I'm like, "Yo, get out of here, nerd!" You clap. <laughs> but yeah, he did go in there and get that work on him, though. So. We know how yeah, that ended up. Yeah, working. once he kicked that door in, there was a wrap. They were like, "Oh shit, he wasn't fucking around." Yeah, it was a wrap. We hadn't said nothing also about the about Sensei, you know, and how he sent Tom Mac on uh, on the on the journey. You know what I'm saying? Right. To look for himself in himself. You know, what the I'm master. It was nothing but a fortune cookie. Right. It was crazy. I like that part of the story because it really put you in a. It put us on the journey with. 
um, Leroy, and we we got to see like, oh, Bruce Leroy was always just looking for himself. Like it, we come to the revelation at the same time that he does, because we're really looking for him to find this master this whole time, you know. And then yeah, until really we has... find out, it's in this moment in the movie that we find out with him. Like you know, it's you know a lot of times in movies they try to they tell you what's happening. And then you right. find, like, you watch the character try to find out what happened. Right. In this right. movie, you you find out with him. Everything is happening with the character, so you get mm. immersed in the movie. And it that's really a very is. that's a very mature perspective. You know what I'm saying? That I think you know you can interpret it like that. You know, as a as an adult, because the way that I translated that after seeing that movie was a little less him finding himself but more him finding his fucking nuts <laughs> right tomato tomato oh, yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, tomato tomato yeah 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 that Same was thing. all i was thinking about the whole time was like god damn i can't believe that you know every one of us human beings on earth dream about fucking vanity every night and this guy's got her in the middle of his fucking cipher and he, he's pushing her away. Where's this man's dick? He fucked the glow. This, he fucked the glow. He needs to be on a mission to find his balls. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's... You are the last yes. <laughs> Where the fuck is your cack? I don't and know. And your balls. <laughs> balls. balls. <laughs> uh yeah yeah it's it's interesting yeah you know, we should mention uh his his whole mission is to you know find the master is you know his his master has has put him on this quest to find <laughs> the final master the that'll master. teach him everything that he needs to know uh but of course you know he's he's he knows everything he needs to know uh we've we've experienced that throughout the whole movie uh uh oh and by the way Glenn Eaton is the name of Johnny Yu, the the best Johnny, friend. I keep calling him Jimmy. Ah, okay, okay. Um, Shouts out to him. What a great actor yeah, and great, great out, job Johnny Yu, shout out to that actor. Did he ever do anything else? Out? I wonder if he's related to Donnie Yu. Uh, uh, Donnie Yu. No, uh, Bill Glenn, Donnie. Glenn, Glenn Eaton is his no. real name. Oh, 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 shit. Okay, Glenn, Glenn, uh, I'm mixing, I'm mixing Glenn. the universe. I'm mashing <laughs> universes. Um, he's Looks like he's in a in a few a few things. Nothing huge, uh. But another, yeah, another actor who should should have been in a million things. He's like a leading. Should have been, could have been. Maybe he material. was on drugs. Maybe he hey, was on drugs. Had he just didn't have his hustle drugs. together. He yeah. didn't know how to stay on well, the job. Yeah, back then, back then, drugs was heavy. You know, vanity had fell victim to drugs. Maybe he fell mm-hmm. victim to drugs as well. You know, you, you know, know. But 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 you never know exactly. We giving him an Asian all star this movie. Yeah, but he's an yeah, all star. We're definitely going to say drugs first before anything. That's probably and this act And this actor's performance was really good, too. The guy who played his master. The uh, only other Asian guy. He was we, like... named, we just now went to the Asian block. <laughs> Asian, Asian number block. two. We talked about Asian dudes. Very we talked racist. About, we, we talked to three Asian dudes. Then we talked about the, the homie Asian dude. We talked about Ernie Reyes, Asian dude. And now we're talking about the sensei, Asian dude. This is the Asian <laughs> block. This is the Asian <laughs> block. Uh, Thomas Aikida. Uh, he was he was really great, and yeah, like the whole his uh, uh, Bruce Leroy's arc is you know he's supposed to be finding the master, uh, but his, the you know his uh, you are he's the like dude, you you you, you learned everything you need to know. You're you're already uh um like you've already mastered dragon. everything. You've already mastered everything physically, but he just needed to believe that in himself at the end. Uh, obviously, Show Shownuff has all the confidence in the world, so he already thinks he's the master. That's how he's able to obtain the glow. He right. already has that yeah, confidence but in himself. But... That's right. The reason that's the right. Reason he, he believes in himself. Conf- but the reason Leroy didn't have the confidence, you got everybody. You got everybody in your family saying you're a weirdo. You right, got everybody, right. All True. These people you True. see in your neighborhood calling you a weirdo. You ain't never gotten the confidence for somebody to say, "Yo, he a weirdo." But he'll whoop your motherfucking ass. Like, ain't nobody <laughs> out here really saying that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ain't getting that love in the hood. 
You know? Yeah. But he is like he's but not once getting you be, that. Once you whoop everybody in the hood, nigga, I guess they got to give you some love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why. What did he could... beat? Like twenty five people in this movie? Yeah, he whipped a lot of people's ass at the end, and even just throughout the movie, he he just beat up a lot of people. <laughs> a lot. I and, want to do a multiverse, like the dark dragon. You know where <laughs> where Shonuf becomes Leroy's teacher. I would love. Uh, I would love to. Act, I would the read the last dragon, dragon. comic. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't taking shit from no nigga, <laughs> no nigga, nigga, nigga. I I, nigga. I think that that's. I think that that all that you that you said, Bill, is like why this is so emotionally evoking. Because especially watching it again recently, this really got me. Like him realizing that he's the master uh you know it's because because he, he he does please, get teased by all these people please and... play that one part and don't skip it until he say let, let me go don't stop playing this until he say let me go let me go okay baptize that nigga is only one place that you have not looked, and it is there, only there. Sorry, I'm gonna I'll keep going and just say I'm just gonna go a little further just to right here mix yeah, it, it yeah mix it up a little bit so uh what you call it YouTube yeah. doesn't be, get mad at me but here we go indeed, indeed. <laughs> so this is like the final fight oh, great shot all right Leroy who's the one and only map I am. Let me go, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, like, ah! the one-to-one comparison. Ready C got the got the side picture right there. That's that's exactly the scene that we just saw. That's I am. <laughs> and Bruce Lee, uh, is it just me or does he kind of look like a psychopath at this freeze? Right <laughs> look, man, Joker. anybody can be made to look like anything with a good pause. I'm trying yeah, to right? tell you, is, you can find somebody in their worst moments in a pause. <laughs> yeah, that was that's a bad moment. It makes him look like the villain. Anybody who's ever been on Facetime with somebody has seen somebody frozen in the worst, most awkward moment of their life. Yeah. Man. This- this was a yeah a great moment because like like you said he's been uh, dissed by all these people and you know I think a lot of nerds can connect with you know just loving a thing and finding uh, you know other people thinking that what you love is weird, um, but uh, you're not usually able to display how cool it is uh, in right. <laughs> that's in the this thing. kind of way. That's um, the be- there. That's a big question about this film. If you're somebody from back in the day and you saw this and you felt so emotional about it and you loved it, have you had your last dragon moment? Have you found the glow in your life? You know what I'm saying? Ooh, right. That's a great mm, one. That's a good Put one. that you in know, the comments. Put or, that or, in or, the comments. Or, or are you just, you know, still stuck in that fucking bullshit where you watching movies and shit like that? You right. know? Because I definitely say that that movie was, you know, something that you know, was a motivator for me in my youth. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was like, you know, I, I had to get the glow, nigga. You know what I mean? I, you know, I got to get the glow. You know, yeah, and I, sure found, I found the glow in, in, in DJing. You know what I'm saying? And, and different things like that. But most, exactly. I'm sure at some point in time, you were not a world class DJ. At no, some I point was, in time, I was a world class look. nerd, nigga. I was a <laughs> I was a world class nerd. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I still am that's today. You, I still am today. Come, I embrace that part gym. of my life. I embrace it all, but at the same time, I still got the glow. And you know, if you haven't got it yet, then maybe you all need to go out there and watch that movie and understand what it's like to attain the glow, because that's the only Absolutely. way you're gonna know. Absolutely. Bars. <laughs> bars. That's the bars. Only way you do it. Know. Go watch it right now. You get your arms moving like this, where they move in slow motion, and you kick niggas in the face, and then the bars come on the TV. That's <laughs> it. If you can't kick nobody's ass in a sash and a silk shirt, then you ain't shit. You ain't shit. <laughs> you ain't shit. If you ain't kick, if you. <laughs> oh man, uh. I'm just laughing because the dude. We never talked about one guy yet. 
And that was the henchman that was Ed's henchman. He is also in Black Dynamite, where he plays the dude who's like, the dude like, these niggas. He's in a bunch of shit, man. He he plays, he's very tight cast, but he's henchman in so many films. Yeah, yeah, he's probably been henchman number three in like 400 movies. (laughs) True. Yeah, he's he he was incredible in this. Uh, yeah, so many great yeah, character actors. At the end of this movie, we have a very similar moment to Vanity's like shitty song moment. Like we we get a very similar moment at the end of this movie, but it's a white party. You know, for all you people throwing white parties today, you're not the first. Vanity did it first. <laughs> oh, word! It. Even Bruce Leroy showed up in his all white shit. Yeah, exactly. He yeah, showed up in a white clean. G suit. Clean. I might have to get one of those for Halloween, just so y'all know. Don't be trying to. Don't be trying to. Oh, me. Don't be trying and, to but me. but you got to go back. Now, see, that's another big thing. And at that time, was break dancing. You know what I'm saying? And they definitely played play, paid homage. To, like I told you, this whole scene was a, a bite on Beat Street's ending scene. Right. And and they're doing that right here with people up rocking and pop locking in the background and shit, you know. And booty shot. I'm yeah. sorry, that was a booty shot, right? There. I didn't even notice that before you just paused it. I was like, <laughs> that was a total booty shot. If you didn't have somebody break dancing in some part of your film in the '80s, you just not it was not you had no credibility. It was not a Credi- yeah, credibility exactly. less. <laughs> It must have been clear and present danger or some shit. Like, right. like, yeah. like and shit. Yeah, right, yeah. You know shit had mad white people in Indiana. Right. <laughs> the Scottish uh, Guard. Yeah, <laughs> like there are so many great moments in this. And yeah, like this this did kind of yeah, like have uh like I haven't seen Beat Street, but I did kind of think What? Of- no, no. But I did think of like I was thinking of uh, like Crush Groove. Uh, <laughs> Ray off. Oh, he's gone. Alex, you hey. get off this fucking microphone and you watch Beat <laughs> tonight. Uh, don't ever call me again. He, he at least was he's able to bring it up real quick. He did bring it up. Mad it's fast. the greatest film of all time. <laughs> yeah, I need to. I need to check it out. I need to check it out. I'm um, surprised. You did, I'm surprised you hadn't seen it either because you brought that shit up mad quick. I thought you had seen it. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. He has seen it. But no. Please <laughs> watch Beach. Oh my god. I mean, you know. Hey man, it was not too long ago. He had. It was seen different Starface, times. So let's we go. all we all. Oh no, not Starface. I mean, I'm not. I, I'm guilty. I, there's plenty of um, uh, classic <laughs> films that I haven't seen, and I'm I'm, I'm guilty. But god damn hey, it, go good. watch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, but no, that's I, yeah, what's getting... podcast, the no, top ten movies people haven't seen. Boom, that, mm. yeah, we're gonna do that podcast. I mean, well, yeah, that's yeah, that that that'd be an interesting one. Yeah, um, we could just start yeah, was... calling out names and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> that could be, that could literally be all movies because there's there's you know no, it can't always... be all movies. Like some movies, just like everybody's seen. Like goddamn, hey, we're movie 200. lovers though. We're movie lovers exactly. though. Yeah. Exactly. This ain't for everybody. This is for movie lovers. Everybody don't come over here. Motherfuckers looking for Stephen A. Smith ain't coming to this channel. I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Maybe Stephen A. That. Smith is watching right now. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Of the show. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I did get like, you know, crush groove and like breaking vibes from like certain moments in this movie. Um and uh even but like, better these are yeah this is those movies but see but when you see better. Beach Street there's such a big difference between mm. Beach Street and and Crush Groove and Breaking mm. that that crush, crush Groove and Breaking stuff is like fucking is like independent student film cornball shit, shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean I mean it's not cornball I love uh, it I love Crush Groove I love uh, that st- I love Crush Groove yeah, I love but it. it's like independent but it's a lot different real. than Beach Street. Mm. It's student okay. film shit. B Street is a real movie. What about okay? Let's stop. This ain't a hip hop conversation. Let's stop. <laughs> it is a hip hop conversation because we're talking about hip hop. Barry Gordy brought you your first top tier hip hop movie. Yeah, join us and on it's the fiftieth our... anniversary of hip hop. Big up, happy birthday to Cool Herc. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, join us on our Beat Street podcast next time. <laughs> Alex, I uh, think... yeah, let's do that. I'm ready for I don't the know. D- for the does Beat Street hold up? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Run hey, that. It's going Run on that. the list. It's going on the list. Let's go. Um, 
But um, you know, we could talk about like I could, honestly, we could talk about this movie for another two honestly, hours. Honestly, I, I got um, of leave, course I actually could. have one question for you, Alex. What's that? Does, Does it? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. At what do you? The what's your vote? What, every... what, what is y'all's vote? Uh, so do we vote? Just, do we uh, say yay let... or nay or what? Uh, yeah. Well, do, well, just let for everybody, everybody know, Alex. Let yeah. everybody know. Just for everybody, in case this is your first time watching or listening, uh, at the end of every episode, we do a vote to see whether this movie stands the test of time. See if it uh have evokes the same emotions as it did the first time we watched it or if we just basically if we still enjoy it um yes yeah, so alex it, you is, go ahead give us your answer does it hold up and then tell us mm. why this is yes i will it. say yeah I, I watched it today and it does hold up it is terrific um, I was surprised because I was expecting to watch it and be like, okay, this is kind of corny. Um, and maybe it barely holds up or it just doesn't hold up at all. Um, there is some like weird, like race like stuff said, but it's like said to Bruce Leroy. Like people will say right. like racist Chinese right. racist shit to Bruce Leroy, yeah. but he's like a black guy. So I was like, I guess this isn't racist. <laughs> they were like, "How can we get? How can we get our racism off? Make the Asians say it. They, they, yeah, they needed that, to yeah. get it off. Have the Asians way. say it to the black dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. That so was the most part. amazing part of this movie. Though. No yeah. one said they were stupid. <laughs> yeah, uh, but so yeah, I thought that that was like, yeah, that was that was interesting. Uh, like that that kind of held up in that sense in the dialogue. Uh, but yeah, the fight scenes were great. And the writing was surprisingly good. Like, I just, like, you know, it's, it's not reinventing the wheel or anything, but it was funny. Uh, it was emotionally evocative, especially it, like, all the moments landed that where they needed to. Um, and, yeah, it, I, despite the fact that some people yeah. were doing things the first time, like fighting it for the first time or acting for the first time, I thought everyone uh, did a great job. This yeah, it could have gone a lot worse for all the things you just pointed out. Word. For sure. For Word. sure, but... <laughs> I do have to ask a question because I don't feel like it was uh, very clear. I mean, yeah, I guess. Does, does it hold, hold up? <laughs> ready, ready to see. see. Well, I mean, you know, this movie invokes a lot of emotion in me, you know, and because it's one of my favorite films of all time. Mm -hmm. And um, when you first hit me up about doing the um, Does It Hold Up show about it, I I was all in because I knew that that would give me a reason to watch it again. And <laughs> um, I did. And I haven't seen it in a very long time. So it was a good testament to whether it holds up or not. You know what I'm saying? It's not something I've watch repeatedly over and over because it's something that stayed with me so much that I didn't feel like I needed to because I right. didn't, I still know everything about it. It said that yeah. movie is a part of my soul. It's just not a film that I saw. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So after looking at it again, uh, fully expecting to maybe have some like, you know, ah, this is stupid type shit in there. It, I, I, I took it in perspective. I feel like that that movie holds up and surpasses its its um its level of back in the day because I think it's it's more relatable even today than it was back then. Um mm. and I think it's a very important film. I think it's something that like Bill said, somebody told him to watch and I think that should be continued to be passed down for future generations. I think it's a film that uh we should all stand behind as long as we're alive and never try to remake and fuck its legacy up. And wherever you are, if you're ever in New York City during any kind of Comic-Con season, buy yourself a ticket and come see my man Ty Mac because he's at every fucking one of them. Oof, man, that'd be Show cool. him some love, man. And if Show you see him... him you Make could sure always come to some kind of New York comic convention and see that nigga sitting at a table with nobody there. 
Yeah, make, <laughs> make sure you go up to him. And I don't mean I'm him. sorry. I don't mean no, no, up no, like just, yeah, yeah. He's, no, he's, no, we he, blowing he, up he this entire it. spot right now. Fuck that. <laughs> take take your ass to go see Tymac at a Comic Con near you, most of New York, and let him know. Drunk Bantha sent you. We want to do a whole Bruce Leroy TV show. Just him going around the hood. I he's a real New York nigga. motherfucker, man. He lives in. He's always at New York local yeah. cons. Hell man. yeah, he's a real New York nigga for real. That's a real shit. That's real shit. And and okay. he's yo, and you know, just on some real shit. I mean, the brother looks great. You know what I'm saying? He's kept he's no real shit. I was Straight just about up. to say the same thing. Honestly, I was just about to say like he still looks great. Dude doesn't look like he looked then because he was like like twenty nah, one or twenty three. He actually he he's really 19. Became, he was nineteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he was look amazing. him up. Look him up because the stuff that he's done, you know, he hasn't been doing too many, you know, feature films and shit like that. But mm. he's a real kung fu motherfucker. He did like kung fu instruction <laughs> and a lot of different, yeah, you know, definitely. shit. In the field of kung fu, so you know, dude is de- mm-hmm. definitely busy. Dude is definitely yeah. not hurting. But you know, go out there and support my guy. Go out there and get you know, show him some love. You know, what I'm right. saying because he's one of so, them, he's one of them few right. people who's so, a really good. So to dude wrap up there. my answer, to wrap up my answer, does it hold up? Yes. Yes, that's two yes votes in there. Uh, I got I got two questions for you, Bill. I guess since since we're you know we're wrapping up here, uh, and we're in the vote. First question is. Hey man, what it look like? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, what it look like? Hey man, what it look like? <laughs> hey man, what it look like? <laughs> uh, but of course, yeah, that's just the first question. Uh, but of course, the second question is: Does, does it, it hold? hold up? Up? I mean, like simple. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Chicago, man, it's fire sparkles going off, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the summertime in Chicago. Make do yourself a favor and come out of here. You know what I'm saying? Do yourself a favor. Um, I will have to say, honestly, motherfucking movie holds up. Mm. Honestly, I was going into this thinking. I'm gonna feel like it holds up. Like I'm gonna like this movie, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go in and say it holds up. There's plenty of times we do movies on this show where I don't like the movie, and I think it still holds up, <laughs> or where I do like the movie, but I don't think it holds up. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm so there's plenty of times that's happened. This is one of them occasions where I like the movie. I like the movie again. I like the movie now, <laughs> and it does hold up, people. I can't tell you anything better than what these two have already said, because there's nothing better. There's nothing more to be said, man. Go out there and support your people. Tom Ack is a motherfucking amazing actor. And, I mean, that was an amazing job for a dude who ain't never done no acting before. And you just that's all you can do if you want to be objective, completely objective. Dude did a great job. Put him in a movie. Put him in a movie that ain't got nothing to do with. Uh, no, you know what? Don't put him in a movie. Put him in. in NCIS. Yeah. Oh, or, uh, yeah, yeah. Something him, like that. You know, yeah. you got LL yeah. and shit in, in, in TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. You know, he's terrible at acting. Put somebody well, like Tomac in there. Hey, let's hey, get Tomac hey. in the season four of Warriors. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? You beat me by a second. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like that would be no amazing. <laughs> in the war- we ain't got no niggas in Warrior whooping no ass. Let's put yeah. some niggas in Warrior. And, and they get just him a, get him a game. Why they just killed man? one black character, so you know they need to fill that space. <laughs> you know the one nigga, one nigga rule. We got it. <laughs> we got it. Let's go, Tomac. He'll make a fight out to L.A. Goddamn, Tomac. <laughs> what we do in the shadows, season six. Season six, baby. What we do in the oh shadows? My. What we do with the six. shadows? He would be great. <laughs> he would be great. He that would be great. Yeah. Or just... or or. The Righteous Gemstone season oh, four. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got you, you. You know, Time Act Kairos. Bring Time we'll be your We'll be your new fucking A&Rs and shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. Your agent, your agent ain't worth shit, Time Act. We, can, we got you, dog. <laughs> We're out here spokespersoning for you. Uh, yeah, Time Act, Glenn Eaton, uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. These are all people that I want to see in shit more. All-stars. Uh, 
They can all be How in many of the cast? Four, if I, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> How many? Uh, is it just Vanity and Show Enough that's dead out of the cast? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Um, yeah. There might be I don't think... know, some other. Actually, I don't what's know about. It? Gerald. Name, what's his name? Gerald. Gerald ain't dead. Okay. And uh, then. Uh, but I mean, the those two. Did the brother die? The two? brother might have died. With those two going, it's like, come on, dude. There's no way you can ever do any kind of remake or reunion or anything with that movie at all. Yeah. I mean, you no, can. I, I mean, I could. I could see like, like a a strictly Bruce Leroy spinoff, but mm-hmm. it's gonna be bad, and mm-hmm. people would just go and see it because of the nostalgic feel. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, like it's this movie is a lot like you know beyond like even if they wanted to remake it and just completely do a reboot and recast all the the, the, oh, the actors you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able, be to, able to con you wouldn't be able to capture this same feel i think that's why they have so much trouble trying to like remake ghostbusters and stuff like that because it's right. really capturing a moment in time uh like well, and you you really and like the moment in the culture where it does remaking it, there's you're you're missing something from. Well, the, I will disagree only for one reason, and this um, is not supposed to be like a part of our show. But I will, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will disagree for one reason. You can do it as long as you do it right. Mm. There shouldn't be a Last Dragon movie or a Last Dragon movie remake. There should or a reboot. There should be a Last Dragon television show. Like Cobra Kai is a television show. Mm. You could call I've it. Heard Cobra Kai you could call. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I seen haven't, that either, man. I haven't seen it either, but I know a lot. I've heard it's very good, show. though. I know a lot about how the show works and how what goes on on the show, and it's not a show about the Karate Kid. It's mm. a show about the characters in the. Karate it's just Kid. it's part of that and universe. Exactly. Let's move mm. on to where they would be in this universe now. Right. And if they did a, they did a, you know, Bruce Leroy. Like Leroy Green now has his Leroy Green dojo, and you yeah. know he's gonna be and teaching. Imagine, the imagine if they, imagine if they did Twitter. like a, a a real true dra- dramatic crime series about Eddie Arcadian and his rise. Oh you know? yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's like right, a right. Uh, yeah uh, 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 Falcone. Uh, Word, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I mean, it works. It works. You could do this. It yeah. really works. You can I just, just have got some out of hood. prison. Look, you can just have some hood nigga that don't want that don't like fucking Bruce Leroy in the, yeah. in the neighborhood. And guess what? He could be dark skin. <laughs> <laughs> you can get everything it. you want, Hollywood. <laughs> you can do it. You can do a, a, a completely dirty Amazon Prime show about those three fucking Asian black guys. In front right. of yeah, the fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not mad at the Actually, black you talking know Asian dudes. It'll That's be mad controversial, get... but everybody will watch that shit. <laughs> that would get greenlit before a fucking Time Max show gets yeah, greenlit. Right? That is for goddamn sure. I think, yeah, who do we need to get that done? Like Justin Lin and I don't know, Tyler Perry. I don't know who's That's like, a good word. I'm God. trying to think of the most, the richest black person in Hollywood right now. No, don't do Tyler that. Perry. Don't do that. No uh, more. Malaysian. Maybe somebody. Oh, oh uh, maybe uh, fucking Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler and Justin Lin working together. Exactly. I would watch None, that. Of, that. I would watch None that. of that would happen. None of that. It was like the happen. watermelon man, you know. <laughs> they just wake up. No, why did no look? Why are just we wake being up stupid? Asian. Why are we being stupid? It needs to be Michael Jai White. First off, go. I mean, yeah, for sure, that'd be good. No, I'm that'd just be saying, dope. Gonna be that'd be dope. Anybody that's gonna be involved. This got to be Michael Jai. Michael Jai White. Rip. Yeah, Michael Jai White would be a good. Yeah, he's produced a lot of stuff. And, All right, yeah, we wild so that'd, be, that'd be dope. We uh, wild. Yeah, get, but, we wild. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 yeah, we're we're getting a little off base. But uh, yeah, we before wild. we get out of here, uh Ready C, where can the people find you on the interwebs? Y'all can find me in the streets of Brooklyn every other Saturday at the Sycamore. If you ever out here, come through and watch me get down on the one twos. You can find me on the internet at DJ Ready C two E E's. Instagram and all that good stuff. I'm about to drop a lot of new mixes and some vintage stuff. I've started converting some radio shows from back in the day to digital. So okay. some content on the way. And um, we also Ready got some C products cool. coming. Like these brand new Ready C weed grinders that we just oh, have shit. created. Oh, 
That's sick. Ready C, fool. We got Ready some nice stuff three. on the way. We got stuff on the way. That's what's up. And so yeah, this so. this we're gonna be dropping in like late September. Are these gonna be available at the, around that time? Oh man, I'm gonna be giving them out. We we're, we're celebrating hip hop's 50th year right now all around the world. And uh, next in two weeks, I have a double header event on August 18th and 19th here at the Sycamore in Brooklyn. Me and DJ Toshi, we're gonna be tearing up the one twos. We have some special. Songs that we're gonna be playing and 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 grooving all weekend long, and I'm gonna be exclusively handing out these brand new Ready C weed grinders and okay. encouraging everybody to come through the spot and get their smoke on. Okay. That's right. Well, we'll, if you uh... catch this after that show, just go to his Instagram, DM him, DM him, and ask him for how you can get hooked up with one of them things, bro. Sure. Sure. Super, exclusive. Super, Super exclusive. Super exclusive, man. I'll be and back in uh in L.A. in October, and you know I'm I'm bringing these to all y'all, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, there'll be links in the description of the video uh for all of that nerdy, beautiful shit. Uh, and guys, check out the comic book trap house channel. Like that shit is. <laughs> Amazing. And that's not dead. It's not dead, man. I'm telling you, me and my brothers are still in daily contact. Shouts out to D Strong. Shouts out to Vic Vega. Shouts out to Super man. Dave. Yeah, man. We're, I'm Super Dave. We got. We, we're we're just reprogramming. We're 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 gonna come back with something that's never been done before, and it's gonna help a lot of people out. We're oh, we're, we're we're gonna. That's what we're trying to do with the next iteration of the comic book trap house. Is uh. Like, like, bring some real market knowledge to the people on a weekly basis. Okay. So, yeah, man. Okay, Ray, she's always out here moving the culture forward, man. We really appreciate you all the time, man. It's dope having you come on the show. You know, y'all go man, out there and check out. Thank the y'all, man. Trap House. These guys do a lot of good work for our community, the culture, the hip hop community, the Hedder community, the comic book community television and movie community we all out here we're really all the same we're really all just one same community you know what i'm saying please we just trying to let them know absolutely That's right you beautiful nerds so if you like this episode man please go like subscribe share this with your family your grandmama hand it to your baby mama your side bitch all of them got to get a copy of the link is so that they can share it with their friends too. And send it to your side bitch so she can send it to her side nigga. That's what I'm talking about, man. We gotta share it. Lord. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks uh for showing up, uh Racy. You guys uh check out all of that stuff in the description. Indeed. Uh thank you. Thank you for watching the show. Uh new episodes of Does It Hold Up drops every other Monday at 4 20 a.m. Check us out on all social media platforms at the Drunk Panthers. I Please love that. Like four twenty a.m. <laughs> hey I'll man, you gotta in. gotta uh, get it out there. Start like it's you know it's, it's four twenty Pacific time, so you guys on the East Coast can get a little a little early uh, for your Monday morning drive. Or hey so. man, Coke out your coke your coke sessions. Like who the fuck yeah. is up that early on the East Coast? Y'all are no, no, no. It's four twenty in Pacific time, but it's like what, oh. seven. It's like seven a.m. in the East Coast. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah. good. Yeah. I smoke in all four twenties across the time zone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh shit! It's four twenty in Los Angeles. Exactly. I'm be I'm be <laughs> if I don't smoke one at four twenty, I'll smoke two at eight forty. <laughs> Double up. That's like girls who forget to take their birth control and take two the next day. That's. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh guys uh yeah please like and subscribe it's not required but if you don't you will not be invited to cookout we will see you in a couple of weeks y'all take care Bye.